Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, I'm going to do one of my favorites and one of a lot of your favorites. Also, an abstract modern cake. This time, we're going to do some sponge painting on ganache, a stencil, and we're also going to do some rice paper sails. I know I've made them before, but we're going to add a couple new twists to them. So let's start off by preparing our fondant for our middle tier. This three-tiered cake was all three tiers were cake. Just the middle tier is covered with fondant. The other two tiers are chocolate ganache. There's not buttercream in this at all. And what I'm doing is I'm just rolling my fondant thin, about a quarter of an inch thin, and obviously I had to restart. <laughs> um, it's okay if you have to restart. Don't worry about it. Just do what you got to do. And then I had measured out the circumference of the cake and the height, and then I'm cutting it down to size, leaving a little extra length and height for cutting off the excess. You'd rather have too much than not enough. It's easier to cut it off than it is to try to get your fondant to stretch. And all three of these tiers, as you saw, were squares. So I'm rolling out the top piece, um, and I am cutting it again a little bit bigger than what I need. And I wanted to leave these pieces to set aside to dry. So I put those to the side and we're moving on with our de next decoration. We're going to make some rice paper sails. Now, I know I have done these plenty of times, but this is a style that just is sticking around. And I haven't done it for a while. So I'm doing this in a different way, a little bit different way. Um, I cut them into those petal shapes. And then I am mixing some black and some red. It's just gel food coloring in cool water is all it is. And then I laid my petals down on a silicone mat and I'm brushing the color onto the petals. What I'm doing here is doing a kind of an ombre effect. I wanted the center where these petals attached or the sails attached to the cake, I wanted it to be darker. I want it to kind of have that ombre effect, um, this depth in the middle and out to the brighter color. And this is super easy to do. And I did both sides. And then I'm just picking up the pieces and draping them over my ro um, rolled up silicone mats. Now, I left these to dry overnight. Um, you can put them in the oven, but I had time to do them overnight. So I decided to do it this time. And they don't tend to shrink up as much if you let them dry overnight. They kind of, when you do it in the oven, sometimes um, after you take them in the oven, as they cool down, they kind of shrink into it themselves a little bit more. So you end up getting more of a curvature in them than you might want. That's what you're looking for. That's fine. But this time I didn't want that. So I just let them dry overnight. And then I'm doing these extra little petals too with a different twist on these. These are just the um, rice paper circles cut into quarters and then some in eighths. And I kind of rounded off the edge, ruffled up the edge on an uneven cut because I was going to do, I was going to do another effect on the tips of these. And I just put them on these um, crickled up parchment paper and let them dry overnight also. And there they are ready to be dried. And now we're going to assemble our cakes. I'm only going to show you the one tier because I did them all the same. I am filling them and coating them in dark chocolate ganache. Dark chocolate ganache is just two to one. I like to do a two to one ratio. Two cups, well, it depends on how much you want to make, but two parts chocolate to one part heavy cream. You melt them, heat up the cream for about three minutes in the microwave in a heat safe measuring cup, and then add it on top of your chocolate, let it melt together, and, and use a whisk to blend it together, and then let it cool. That's all there is to it. And then this first coat is a little messy. That's okay. This is basically just to lock in the crumbs and to start our shape. Squares are kind of hard to get. If you do struggle with squares, I would recommend getting some of the uh, plexiglass discs in the square shapes. That is how I perfected, not perfected, because nothing I do is perfect, but how I worked on getting my, my corners. And there, I just used a serrated knife to cut off the extra board. I used some quarter sheet boards that I had. 
Um, so they weren't our, the shape of the cake or the size of the cake. So I just used a serrated knife over the edge of my counter, being careful not to cut your countertop. Um, and they, those cut down very easily. And this is our second coat. Now when I'm trying to get those sharp corners, I like to build up those corners as I did. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed that. I built up the corners um, by piping the ganache there first and then around the top edge. And that's kind of, you're getting a bulk of that um, ganache in the parts that are the hardest to get crisp. If you don't add more there, then you're gonna end up scraping it away and have rounded edges, and that's not what you want. Even though this is gonna have a texture to it, I wanted the foundation to be nice and square, as square as I can possibly get without the discs. Now I like to scrape from the inside, outside to the inside, and then go from the bottom up because you might get a buildup of uh, ganache in the middle there when you're scraping from the sides in. So it doesn't hurt to go from the bottom up to try to get rid of that extra little hump that you might have there. Sorry my camera keeps going out of focus. I'm not sure what's going on. It's one of those things you don't notice until you're editing. You know, well, this is kind of important. I need people to see this, so I can't really edit it out all the way. So I apologize about that. And this is my middle tier. It's just a one tier that I cut in half and I did do a layer of ganache filling in the middle. And now the, these pieces of fondant have dried. Um, I can just kind of place them on and then cut off the excess pieces and they're not going to um, stretch out and kind of get be all loosey-goosey. They've sat out for about mm, two hours before I ended up putting them on the cake. And then I just cut the excess off at the corners. And here's a stencil I used. I cut off that bottom edge. Otherwise, you're going to have a good quarter to a half inch gap on the bottom of nothing. And I, this is shorter tier. So I just cut that edge off. So that's not even an issue. And here I just mixed food coloring, the same gel food coloring with some um, piping gel. And then a little bit of Everclear just to thin it down a bit. So that it's easier to, um, put on the stencil and I start in the middle and scrape it out. That is kind of a little trick on how to keep your stencil in place. Start in the middle and scrape out. And there we have our pattern. It's really, it's a crackle stencil, but I thought I'd use it with different colors besides the metallic. And here we have our dried uh, sails. The ones that aren't on the on the um, floral wire, which I don't know where that footage went. All I basically did was just kind of wrap the ends around that floral wire. And then I, this is just oil. I just used vegetable oil, vegetable oil and heated it up. And then basically just frying the tips just to get another dimension of texture. And um, when you fry them, they lose some of the color. They turn lighter right where you're frying them. And I thought that was pretty cool. These I'm going to use as kind of accent and fillers. Now we're assembling our cake. Now remember, I didn't show you uh, me frosting that top tier, but I did the same thing on the top as I did on the bottom, just like the middle tier, but it does not have the fondant. So I have four straws in there. These are the boba tea straws uh, on each corner. Squares, you don't need quite as many because as long as you got those corners supported, you're pretty good unless you're dealing with a big, heavy cake. So they're all the same height. I add a little ganache before I put my middle tier on, and then I'm putting my top tier on. And these are askew on purpose. I didn't want them to be just perfectly lined up. I wanted them to be a little bit of abstract and askew a little bit. Now I'm going in with a palette knife, a small palette knife, and I'm just adding some texture and I'm using a pastry brush to add some texture also by using the tips and just kind of stippling it. No rhyme or reason to this. This is just a random texture that will, you'll see more once the painting is done. And these are those pockies. I've, I've never had them before now, 
But I wanted to add some rods, and I thought, let's do something different besides chocolate. And I thought, I'm going to try those Pockies. So that's what I used, and they worked out great, and they're definitely edible and yummy. So I just cut them all to a gradation of heights, and I kind of wrapped that triangular section around the bottom corner and the top edge. And then I'm going in with, this is just what I do. I just used um, black airbrush color, just straight black airbrush color. And I'm kind of trying to get it all into the nooks and the crannies. And then I'm using a sponge and my hands are still stained, guys. I'm not kidding. I did this four days ago and my hands are still stained. Wear gloves. That's my public service announcement there. Wear gloves. Don't, don't be um, anxious and not wanting to stop what you're doing, put them on. <laughs> I've looked terrible. So I'm just sponging this on and I did not want to get a complete full coverage. So um, yeah, it's more of a modeled look. And then I'm going back in with a, it's a copper um, luster dust and I didn't even mix it with anything. I just used a um, the same sponge and just um, stippled it on that way and kind of concentrated on the corners more so around the edges and on the corners. Now I'm just taping together three sets, uh, sets of three petals, just a um, petals. They look like petals, sails. I mean, you could call them either one. Um, but instead of placing them one at a time with all of them, I started with some groupings and I just wrapped them with floral wire. I'm sorry, floral tape around the wire. Now you could stick straws in the cake before you put the, um, the wires in there, but this is not going to be eaten. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't bother with that. So I did just stick them in the cake, but yeah, just use straws. And then I just randomly placed those other pieces of rice paper. Yeah, I always want to say it. You know me. It's not wafer paper. Rice paper, kind of to fill in where there were any gaps, the ones with the, um, the fried edges. And then I'm just going back and adding a little bit more brighter, um, of the luster dust. I did grab another fresh sponge that was still a little wet from being washed and um, just wanted it to be a little brighter. And then the last touch is I'm just using brown airbrush color and I'm just airbrushing along the edges and where the tears meet to kind of soften those edges a little bit. It was a little too stark when you go from that dark to the red to the dark again. So I thought I would add a little brown. You could do black, that'd be fine too, but I knew either one would work. So there it is all done, guys. I hope you like this. It's been a long time coming for me to do an abstract one like this again. These are truly one of my favorite things to do. And you could do this in any color, but since this is a uh, fall time, I wanted to do the deeper colors. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.